Hey everyone, Renee here. So I've got my winter skincare routine for you, but I'm gonna do it a little differently this time. Rather than showing you just the baseline fundamentals of what I do, I'm gonna give you kind of like a week long, five day week long skincare routine vlog. So you can have an idea of how it might change from day to day, how I separate my actives when I use devices. A lot of times my skincare routine really depends on just my skin condition that day, which depends on a whole host of other things, but it's not always the same routine every single day. It's not a cookie cutter thing, but you know, I, I just go with my skin tuition. So these are not tutorials. They are so customized for my skin and what my skin needs and what really works for me. And that comes from like pretty much years of experimentation. This is more for you just to see what I do and I hope you can enjoy it. In the winter, I tend to wake up with my skin feeling pretty parched, especially with the heating units going on all night. And sometimes it's even, you know, a bit uncomfortable, it's tight. So I always put a mist on my bedside table. First thing I do, I just mist my face. It's immediate relief. Um, and the two that I reach for the most are Laneige's Cream Skin Mist and this one from Peach and Lily, their Glass Skin Veil Mist. Cream Skin Mist is the most moisturizing mist I've ever tried. And you could actually replace a moisturizer just by using this. It's a milky emulsion. And if you have winter dry skin that needs a glow, this will give you that glow. Um, it's very much like the Tatcha's Dewy Skin Mist, except for I think it's even heavier. In fact, this might be the only thing holding my skin together right now as I film it because I haven't done my routine yet. Um, but yeah, the Peach and Lily is also milky emulsion, but I find this to be a more balanced formula in that it's not as heavily moisturizing. So I just cleansed my skin with the usual water rinse. You know the drill by now. Um, that's always been enough for my skin. It always leaves it feeling really kind of clean. First step after cleansing for me is usually serum. I use that before. I use, you know, any kind of hydrating formula. And the method to my madness is I I follow pretty much two guidelines only. And one is thinnest to thickest consistency. That's how I like to layer my products, but also the most concentrated first to the least concentrated later. I want the most concentrated formulas on my skin first. And usually those serums um, tend to have a thinner consistency anyway. They tend to be very lightweight and fast absorbing. For me in the AM, it's pretty much always gonna be a vitamin C serum. So because my skin isn't yet fully adjusted to the higher concentration of tretinoin that I've been using, I'm still in cautious mode, which means I'm still being conservative about the other actives that I use alongside in my routines during this period because from personal experience, sometimes it just takes one extra um, formula to just make everything blow up. More specifically, I'm avoiding the formulas that require a low pH in order to work effectively because the low pH is what can be really irritating to my skin. We're talking acids. A non ellascorbic vitamin C that I've been using and really enjoying is this one from Youth to the People. They're 15% vitamin C and caffeine energy serum. So the texture of this is weightless in that it absorbs really quickly, even as you're applying it. It just disappears into your skin. So it doesn't feel like it's particularly hydrating or anything like that, but that makes it a perfect first treatment for layering skincare on top. I love the way it makes my skin feel when I use it. It makes my skin feel kind of energized, but also the glow. It makes the skin really glow, which is what you know, I want from my vitamin C serum. So a serum that I've been using just for the sheer joy of it because it hydrates my skin so much, but it also gives me so much comfort to use it is this one from a new Korean brand, a really exciting one called Tune 28. They're propolis plus vitamin C, B3, B5, B6 serum. 88% propolis extract. It's just so full of beautiful skin loving ingredients, all the vitamins that our skin loves, as well as, you know, the calming ingredients, the hydrating ones. This is such a me serum. This is really up there with my other longtime favorite honey serum from Dr. Circle. I may even like this more. In fact, I, I think I do. There's a real elegance to this texture in that it's lightweight, but still very hydrating. But it leaves your skin with a really smooth textural finish. So I'm using two layers of this because I want more hydration and two layers is perfection. It just kind of brings my skin where I really want it to be just in terms of how bouncy it feels and hydrated it feels. After two layers, this doesn't have that sort of heavy, sticky residue, which some other honey serums or some heavier serums can have. So it's kind of perfect. Two layers is kind of perfect for eye cream. I've been loving this one from Peach and Lily. They're pure peach retinoic eye cream. So this is so perfect for right now because it's lightweight, but it's not too lightweight. It's just 
moisturizing enough, in my opinion, without being too much, too heavy, other than being skin plumping and nourishing. This has peptides and beca chyle, great for you know combating signs of aging. But I think what I love the most is just the way it finishes on the skin. I mean, your skin feels moisturized and very hydrated, but also smooth. It kind of smooths out this whole area, which makes it great for you know using under concealer. I have a new favorite oil serum in my routine. In fact, my skin has really been feeling like it needs it. Usually during the winter time, you know, what my skin craves more or needs more of are the lipids, the lipid layers. I've been loving this one from Biophile, their bio barrier nourishing oil. So this is very much an antioxidant serum. The blend of oils in here are all very antioxidant rich, but they're also the dry oils as well. So this, this is really lightweight and quick absorbing as well. It's not heavy or oily. So this can really suit really all skin types. The star ingredient here is one of my favorites, which is green tea seed oil, but this is fermented green tea seed oil. And you guys know, well, many of you know that I did witness the whole sort of green tea fermentation process and how that just helps to enhance the antioxidant value. This also contains, you know, squalane, rosehip seed oil, just all the very balancing thin oil, but this also has THD in it as well, which is, you know, that powerful vitamin C derivative, which is such a perfect addition to have in an oil serum because it is lipid soluble. So it works really well. And it's so nice to see in here. So I always like to use my oil serum right after my hydrating step, because I feel like it helps seal the hydration in, but also the hydration helps the oil just absorb better as well. I do about two pumps with an oil serum. I like to just press it into my skin. It really makes such a difference. I feel like it helps my hydrating serums just last longer on the skin, but it really helps balance out the dryness as well. It can make an immediate difference. You know, as soon as I apply this, I feel like my skin just, just drinks it all up. It's just, it completely, it just absorbs. There's no leftover oiliness at all. I've been using a heavier moisturizer just because my skin is just really needing it right now. And the one that I've been just using for the last few months is this one from Pharmacy, their Honey Halo. Definitely coming to the end of this, but I just love how rich it is. You know, I love a, a dense and rich moisturizer. Although this doesn't, have a heavy greasy finish on the skin, I noticed. It's just right for my skin right now. It just gives me the long lasting moisture that I absolutely need. So today I'm really gonna be spending the majority of my time indoors. I'm just stepping out for a little bit to run a few errands, but it'll be really, really quick. Um, so I'm not gonna be doing makeup or anything like that. There is absolutely no need for it. But I am gonna apply some sunscreen because I am stepping out right after I, you know, finish filming this, even though like literally the only exposed amount of skin <laughs> would be this. And the two that I've been really, you know, really using the most are these two. These are both classified as serums as far as I'm concerned. These are sunscreens with a really great serum-y consistency. So the daily dose is a vitamin C serum and sunscreen hybrid. So it's a vitamin C serum that actually has an SPF value of 40 to it and a PAA of three pluses. So you can use this in the serum step before you apply moisturizer so you get the vitamin C benefit to it. I personally use this over my moisturizer because, you know, I just use it as a sunscreen because it just, it's so nice that way, especially during the colder winter months and when my skin is feeling dry. So this is a thin but rich texture, but I love how glowy it makes my skin look after I use this. So this is, you know, actually perfect for a day like today. This other one I'll use in another skincare routine so you get to see it. For lips, I absolutely love these sculpted lip oils from OG. This is sculpted, jojoba oil. It's a lip oil, but it's in a balm form. And it's honestly one of, it's, it's so good. It applies so beautifully. It stays on. So it's not as sort of flimsy as your regular lip oil. It has staying power. It stays on, but also this comes in a whole bunch of different colors. And those are pigmented colors. They're not like your average, you know, pigmented lip oil, which does you know, it is flimsy. It does disappear after like 10 minutes. Those stay. 
But anyway, yeah, I absolutely love these. Sculpted jojoba oil. So that's it. I'll be back for my evening routine. So to start off my evening skincare routine tonight, I'm going to do something different from what you regularly see in my evening skincare routines, um, which is I'm just going to do one cleanse. There's definitely areas of my routine where I can and have indulged, but cleansing is not one of them. In fact, I try as much as possible just to do what is necessary. I think especially if your skin is on the dehydrated and dry side, then it really makes a difference not to over cleanse. And the same goes for me with exfoliation. That's just something I do only when necessary. So it's not kind of a, a regular, you know, on schedule thing. It's just when I feel like, okay, I need it. That's when I do it. There really isn't a lot to remove today. I didn't wear any makeup and even the sunscreen I use doesn't use any water resistant filters in it. And I was only outside for a little bit. And even then most of my face was covered up. So my skin is actually feels pretty clean. And most of my, I don't feel like there's anything sitting on top of it. So I've been really enjoying this cleanser from Aveeno. This came out last year on um, their Calm and Restore line, and this is their Nourishing Oak Cleanser. This truly is one of the gentlest cleansers I've tried, and I love how soothing and calming it feels when I'm applying it on my skin. This came really handy during the time when I was retinizing, and my skin was sort of red, inflamed, and irritated. This was just instantly you know, calming and soothing, and it doesn't strip your skin at all. This doesn't foam at all. This is not fragranced at all, which is such a relief because a lot of the Aveeno's formulas are quite heavily fragranced in my opinion, which is really overwhelming because I don't love the fragrance either. This works in the same way as you know, La Roche-Posay or Sorabi's Hydrating Cleanser, except for the texture on this is a lot more lush. It's kind of a thick, comforting gel. This can definitely accommodate a wide range of preferences. It rinses off completely clean, doesn't leave any residue, but your skin doesn't feel stripped. It feels actually quite hydrated. So I guess I do a water rinse as a first cleanse, and then I apply this on my wet skin. Just a side note, because I do get asked this quite a bit, but this step obviously I do over a sink, but the rest of my routine is always done on my vanity, because that's where I store all my formulas. Cleansers are the only products I store in my bathroom. Everything else I put on my vanity, and definitely don't ever <laughs> ever store an oil serum in your bathroom, it will go off like three times faster. So non-tretinite serum, I always want to use my CAIS. Unfortunately, this isn't empty and I am still waiting for my new one to come in. I think they just came back in stock. So instead I'm using a niacinamide serum. This is from Allies of Skin. Their prebiotics and niacinamide pore refining booster. I really appreciate how robust this formula is. And I don't want to be reductive and just say, oh, it's a 10% niacinamide serum because it really isn't about that just central single ingredient. You know, it's got such a, a beautiful supporting cast of um, characters. This kind of has everything and does it all. It's not just strengthened the health of my skin and also really lessened inflammation when there has been inflammation, but at the same time, it's really improved the way my complexion looks as well. Skin looks brighter, more even, and texture isn't as obvious. Speaking of texture, this has a really great texture. In fact, um, it's again, one of those serums that's great to use first, um, not just because you want it to go on your skin and undiluted, but also because it kind of just sinks in. It absorbs so fast. It is very hydrating when you apply it, but no residual feeling. So it's very easy to layer on top of without issue. Doesn't pill, anything like that. For hydration, I'm feeling like I need a bit more than I did this morning. So I'm going to bring out the big guns my Hadalabo Shirojun Premium. You know, I've switched over from the Gokujun Premium, which is always going to be, I mean, it's always going to be on rotation for me, but I've been really enjoying the Shirojun because it's got everything that um, the Gokujun has, except for it's also formulated with tranexamic acid and some vitamin C derivatives that are specifically really good at just brightening the skin tone and evening it out as well. So in addition to just being a great and thorough skin plumper, this is also fabulous at just reducing any kind of redness due to inflammation and just general skin tone issues, unevenness, brown, you know, spots, hyperpigmentation. It helps not encourage more of it, but yeah, no. So I've been really, really loving this a lot. So the one I'm using is the heavier premium. This isn't the premium light, which is a lot more watery, a lot thinner, which is great for like the summer, more humid days, but this is more substantial. It almost feels slightly moisturizing as well. It has a little 
little bit of that emulsion quality to it as well. So this is this is hefty. In fact, this still seems slightly lighter in texture than the Gokujun Premium, but right now this is really working for me. It's got a slight milkiness to it and is immediately quenching. Um, one layer is usually enough. But I think, you know, speaking of areas in which I tend to be indulgent, I'm going to do two layers just because why not? After two layers and as this dries down, I definitely feel that hydrated tackiness, which is something I actually welcome, especially when my skin is feeling so dehydrated. I almost feel like this immediately just reconstitutes my skin. Um, but yeah, I feel the plumpness and the glow. And you know, the tackiness does, after a little bit, it just goes away. And also after I apply moisturizer, it's gone. I'm gonna use an oil serum to lock in that hydration, but also my skin just really needs the extra lipids right now. Especially in the winter, I just keep coming back to Votary's Super Seed Oil. This is pretty much the one that I always want to use all the time. This is a fresh new bottle, which I always love because it even smells so fresh. It's like getting fresh produce. It's just so nourishing. It's got all the superfoods, the omegas and all the fatty acids, and it just feels great on my skin. Um, there's also no fragrance. There's no essential oils in here, but it's just pure like skin food, in my opinion. In the evening, I do appreciate a richer oil, especially one that's um, heavier in omegas. So I've been using a lusciously rich eye cream at night, which is something I welcome again. I think I stopped using rich eye creams for a few years and was really focused more on the gel cream type texture, the very lightweight textures, mainly because um, I did develop some milia at some point, and now, they're kind of all gone and they're not really coming back. So I'm happily back to using the creamy stuff. And the one that I've really been enjoying is Dream Eye Cream from Youth to the People. This keeps the fine lines at bay and everything from looking less crackly. I'm pretty sure it keeps new ones from forming, especially when things are you know dry and dehydrated. But even the deeper ones that I do have, which I do celebrate actually, they're just a lot less obvious because they're well moisturized. This doesn't have a super dense texture like Shiseido's Benefiance. It actually feels very fluffy and cloud-like, but it is creamy and, you know, I really love using it. I even use it on my eyelids and it's not so heavy that it makes things, you know, kind of fall and droop, but really moisturizing. Immediately, I can't feel my smile. For moisturizer, Honey Halo is what I've been using most of the time, but something that I've been doing that's been really, really helpful that I want to show you, um, especially when skin has been feeling particularly tight and dry. So something that I discovered that really, really helps the last time I was retinizing, quite recently actually. I use my moisturizer the way I would use a leave-on mask, so I pretty much pile the moisturizer on. I'm using, you know, maybe two to three times what I usually would do. For that, I use my dependable Physio Gel. This is, you know, something I've mentioned before that is probably the moisturizer moisturizer that I've used for the longest and most consistently. It's always on rotation for me. You know, this is one of the more calming, reparative moisturizers. So I take the same amount as I would for um, a moisturizing mask and I just apply it on my skin. I don't even really spend time rubbing it in. I mean, I could. I can give my skin like a good face massage during this time, but otherwise I just don't even really rub it in. I already have that layer of um, oil serum underneath, so I already have a moisturizing layer underneath, but otherwise this is probably one of the more effective um, moisturizing techniques that I've tried. By the time I go to bed, this will have dried down and it's not going to be like a messy thing, get all over my pillow and all that kind of stuff. So that's something I really love about it. But there's also the option after maybe half an hour um, to tissue anything remaining just off my skin, which I've never felt the need to do. Uh, I felt this to be way more effective than a lot of overnight sleeping masks for me. For lips, something new that I've been using that's been quite shockingly good, it's really pleasantly surprising surprisingly good from Fit Glow Beauty, their Night Lip Serum. What's fascinating about this is the format of it looks like it's, you know, just a lip oil or even a lip gloss, but you can't tell from looking at this how strong it actually is or how well it works. You know, this is shea butter, it is beeswax, it is, um, you know, cocoa butter. There's also some really beautiful plant ingredients in it as well as um, vitamin E, but this is very unassuming to look at. I mean, you can actually tell when you do have it how, how thick it is, but as you apply it, I mean, it is like a gloss and it's intense. It's an intense coating on your lips and it stays. It really stays all night. So I've been 
really enjoying this. And it's got a nice glossy finish as well. So this is something I use during the day as well. But for now, I have been using it at nighttime. Actually, I'm putting way too much on right now. But it also smells like vanilla, which is really nice, as is a nice scent to it. So that's it for day one. Simple focus today. Just on making sure that my dry winter skin is well hydrated and well moisturized. So thank you so much for watching and stay tuned for Think Trent Day. Anyway, bye.